What's that? You're leveling your duelist and you want to get to maps as quickly as possible? Then you've come to the right place. Hello Exile, you're watching Altec 2K Gaming. And this is the best way I've found of leveling a duelist in the early game to get to your first ascendancy as quickly as possible. In the Twilight Strand, we're going to use Double Strike and Chance to Bleed. This makes pretty light work of Hillock as we can just hit him a couple of times, make him bleed and make him chase us. Once he's down, into town. Talk to Tarkley and let's pick up Splitting Steel as the quest reward. We're also going to pick up a two-handed axe. If he doesn't have one, then a two-handed sword will do at a push. And as with any character, let's keep an eye out for runner's boots. And if you're not lucky the first time round, we'll check each time we come back to town. We're also going to keep an eye out for green green red links. Our first two link will be Splitting Steel, linked to Chance to Bleed. With Splitting Steel, we get a bonus skill of Call of Steel. This skill serves two purposes. The first one, it will give us Steel Shards. You should hit this skill whenever you enter a new area to make sure you've got steel shards ready to go. Whilst you have these, hitting an enemy will impale them. Hitting Call of Steel again will pull those shards out of the enemy, causing a small explosion around them. Now that you know the important parts, let's get down to it. Head out of town into the coast and we're going to run left to right to the exit. You don't need to kill anything in here, but you do want to grab the waypoint as you pass it. Once you get to the exits at the end, we're going to go into the mudflats. And in here, we're going to loot the three rower nests. Do be extremely careful. Rowers are evil and will happily stun you till death. Once you have the three shells from the nest, we're going to head to the right of the arena and find the exit to the submerged passage. Touch the shells on the wall and head straight in. In here, grab the waypoint and take it straight back to the coast. Head down now into the tidal islands and we're going to run around the left hand side. Once you get to the bottom, you'll meet Hailrake. He has motion prediction to level 5, so we need to move around him somewhat erratically to avoid him killing us. Once he's down, grab the medicine chest quest and the portal scroll. Log out and back in and we should end up in town. We're going to grab Ancestral Protector and Dash from Tarkley for the quest rewards, and we're going to look to buy any red green green items if we didn't get one already. Head over to Nessa and get the Quicksilver Flask and Volley. We're also going to buy from her Steel Skin and War Banner. Put Steel Skin on your left mouse button so it activates as we run. We can do this because the guard skills are all instant cast. We now have our first three link. Splitting Steel, Chance to Bleed and Volley. Take the waypoint back to the submerged passage. Distract enemies with your totems as you use Splitting and Call of Steel on them. Leave War Banner active on your back until you get to bosses and drop it to get big bursts of power. Stay close to your totem to get the attack speed bonus. In this area, find the bridge stroke stairs thing and we're going to drop our portal on it. We're then going to head onwards to the ledge and pass straight through it to the climb. Head right and grab the waypoint. If there's a big open space below the waypoint, then go down, else up. Locate the green skeleton on the cliff and head past him up to the lower prison. Do not kill the boss that drops in the sky. Take the waypoint back to town, go through the portal into the submerged passage and head downwards to the flooded depths. In the unlikely event you don't find it down, head up. Kill the Dweller and once he's down, log back to town. Talk to Tarkley for the skill points book. At this point, your passive skill tree should look like this. We're going to buy red 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 or red green green items and then head over to Nessa to get Maim. Link Maim to Ancestral Protector. The totem will now maim enemies, causing them to take more damage from your attacks. Up to now, I haven't been using body armor because of the penalty you get to movement speed. However, now that we got out of the gladiator on the tree, this is no longer a problem, so we can now equip a chest piece. If you haven't managed to drop an upgraded axe in the form of a Jade Chopper yet, then do try and get one of these from Tarkley if he's selling one. If you normally level with spells instead of attacks, then what you need to know is keeping your weapon up to date is the most important thing for doing damage. A low level weapon will start to feel really, really bad. You're never going to face this problem with spells because spells get most of their power from the gem level. Attacks don't. So now that you know this, you will be checking with every vendor when you go back to town for a better weapon. It's important to note that you can also upgrade your current weapon using the vendor recipe. For this, we trade our weapon with a rare rustic sash and a blacksmith's whetstone. In return, we get the same weapon back, but with a sizable increase to physical damage. If we don't have at least a large mana flask, buy one from Nessa. Take the waypoint back to the lower prison and work your way through to the upper prison. And then finally to the warden's chamber. Follow the blood trails on the floor until you come face to face with Brutus. Use your totem to help distract him as you lay as much damage as possible while avoiding his slams. Try and stand behind him throughout the fight if you can. And don't forget that your dash skill can help you do this. And once he's down, log out and back to town. Buy Leap Slam from Tarkley and Life Tap from Nessa for the quest rewards. We're then going to buy Vitality and Precision from Nessa and if we can afford it, also faster attacks. 
Our movement skill 3 link is going to be Leap Slam, linked to Life Tap and then Faster Attacks. And we can now drop Dash. It should be noted that Leap Slam is now using our life instead of mana. This means that we can use it far more frequently. However, do check your life pool every so often because it will drain the pool quite quickly until we get more regen. Our vitality will help offset this quite nicely once we level it up a bit. Now that we've laid out the basics you need to look out for, I'm going to pick up the pace somewhat. Take the waypoint to Prisoner's Gate, run down the side with the cliff and take the offshoot to find the next offshoot and head out to the ship graveyard. Grab the waypoint, this is normally near the entrance, then find the overturned boat and enter the area beneath it. Find the quest marker and touch it to release the all flame. Grab it and then head to the exit at the back of the room. Now find the entrance to the Cavern of Wrath. This is normally diagonally opposite to the entrance to this area. Grab the waypoint and take it to the ship graveyard. Find and destroy Fairgraves. Once he's down, log out. Grab the skill book from Bestel for killing the pirate. And we're going to buy three gems from Nessa. Spectral Helix, Chance to Poison and Enduring Cry. We're now going to drop Splitting Steel and Volley. Our new three link will be Spectral Helix, Chance to Bleed and Poison. We're about to kill the end of Act 1 boss, and she does a lot of cold damage. We might want to get some cold resist strings. To do this, we can take an iron ring and sell it with a blue gem to a vendor. So now that we're ready to take on our quest, let's grab the waypoint back to Cavern of Wrath, run through it and get to Mervale. To down her, we're going to use Spectral Helix for the first time against a boss. Spectral Helix is a bit different to normal gems. Instead of throwing out projectiles towards an enemy, they basically throw out projectiles that spin around you. These will orbit around their current trajectory even if you move. This means that we just spin them up near the boss and then run around dodging her attacks and keep spinning them out. Don't forget to use your totem for distraction purposes. Spectral Helix will make light work of this boss and both her phases. Now exit her lair to the southern forest, run up the wall to the right and exit to the Act 2 town. Exit the town to the right to the old field, follow the road into the crossroads, then follow the path to the waypoint. Head upwards and enter the Chamber of Sins. We want to head to the center, and once we get there, follow the waypoint to the exit. It's a straight line to the stairs from here. Once in here, we're going to run around until we find the offshoot to Fidelitas the boss. Dispatch him, get the baleful gem from the crafting bench, and log out. Back in town now, take Corrupting Fever as the quest reward from Groost, then buy Blood Rage from Yina. Exit stage left to the riverways, follow the path, and use Leap Slam to jump over the broken bridges. This area is dangerous because of the little tree monster things. For this reason, I suggest not stopping to kill anything. Grab the waypoint as you pass it, eventually entering the western forest. Follow the path downwards, grabbing the waypoint and noting the side of the road it's on. Cut down Captain Artiri at the bottom of the area and pick up the emblem he drops. Place this in the thematic seal. Now head up the area on the opposite side of the room to the waypoint. Eventually you'll find the entrance to the Weaver's Chamber. A large, dangerous spider. And if you suffer from arachnophobia, I'm deeply sorry. Because you really can't close your eyes for this fight, or she might kill you. For this fight, we're going to use our two new skills. But do take care, as both of these skills will consume large chunks of your life. Corrupting Fever will take a large chunk of our life when we first cast it, and it will give us a buff for a short period, during which we can apply Corrupted Blood to our enemy. We can refresh this for free by using Leap Slam to jump around, because skills that cost life will refresh the skill. Just make sure you don't spam it, or you will end up killing yourself. Blood Rage causes us to take 4% of our life and energy shield pool as physical damage per second. As a buff, it grants us increased attack speed, but also more Leech. And Leech should offset the cost. Once we take the Weaver down to about half health, she'll go up into the ceiling, and we'll just be left with her ads for a little while until she comes back down. What you want to try and do in this fight is stay behind her, because she will poison you if you're in front of her. Once Spectral Helix takes her down, grab Malagaro's Spike and log back to town. By this point, your tree should look something like this. And don't worry if you're struggling to keep up with the tree, I will go over it step by step at the end of the video. We can now pop back quickly to Act 1 to talk to Bestel to get a skill book. Now back to the Act 2 waypoint and take it straight to the crossroads. Follow the path right out into the broken bridge. At the end of the path in the Broken Bridge, you'll find Kraitlin. End him. And take his amulet. Log back in and take the waypoint to the Riverways. Follow the path that breaks out of the side of the road and enter the wetlands. Find Oak's camp towards the centre of this area and take him out. Also take his amulet, then run to the top left of the area and grab the waypoint and touch the door covered in vines. Log to town and take the waypoint to the Western Forest. 
Whichever side of the road the waypoint's on, head in that direction until you reach the outer wall, and then head down it until you find a Lyra. We are going to help her for the all res, mana regen, and crit multi. We are now going to pop quickly back to the Act 2 town and talk to Silk to get vicious projectiles. This will replace Chance to Poison in our main 3 link, now making it Spectral Helix, Chance to Bleed, and Vicious Projectiles. Take the waypoint, back to the wetlands, and enter the ruins. It's now a straight path all the way to the end of Act 2 boss, the Val Oversoul. He takes an absolute age to come out the ground, so you might want to have a good book handy, or you could watch one of my other YouTube guides. Here we're going to use Spectral Helix to end him, but we do need to dodge his slams, his lasers, his falling rocks, until that is, our spinning axes terminate him. We can now log out and take the waypoint directly to Act 3. In Act 3, run left and kill the guard captain. You now have to wait for Clarissa to stand up, and then make sure you talk to her. If you don't, she won't be in town when you need her later. Once that's done, run down and left until you find the entrance to the Act 3 town. Once in town, run up the stairs to the right, and then exit to the slums. We do not want to go into the centre of town. In the slums, we'll find the crematorium. Within, we'll find a quest marker which marks the location of Piety. When we take her below half health, she'll retreat. We then just get Ptolemon's bracelet and head back to town. Talk to Maramoa and pick up a skill gem that best vibes with your future plans. This build has no need for any of these in its immediate future. Over to Clarissa now, where we're going to buy Determination and get the sewer key. Drop Vitality and equip Determination in its place. Back to the slums now, we're going to open the sewer grate and head straight down. In here we get the first bus before the waypoint. As you run past the waypoint, grab it as we will need to come back here later. In the room after the waypoint, you should find the second bust. If this room isn't huge, then search for the final bust right, else find it just beneath the exit. You can always find this to the left of the arena. Next time you head back to town, be sure to hand these to Hagen for a skill point. Into the marketplace now and run around the outskirts looking for an offshoot through some arches. The waypoint is just towards the end of this corridor, so we're going to grab it. If you don't have the trial, it's in the catacombs. If you do, run past the catacombs to the far wall and walk around the outskirts until you find the door to the battlefront. In here, we're heading left and slightly down to find the waypoint. Below this, hit the chest with the quest marker and pick up the ribbon spool. If you are level 25 or above, go left to the docks, otherwise we're heading up to Solaris Temple. Whichever area you don't go to first, you will be running straight after the area you've gone to. In my case, the docks was up first. We're going to explore this area looking for a quest marker, and as we find it, you can feel free to kill as much as you like, because this area is really good for XP. Once you find the quest marker and pick up the thematic sulfite, you can log and take the waypoint back to the battlefront. I'm now going up and left to find the door to Solaris Temple. In here, we're going to follow the carpet until we find the stairs down to the next level. In level 2, follow the carpet until you find a branch with lights down the edge of that carpet. Follow this branch and grab the waypoint and talk to Lady Dahlia, or as she's otherwise known, not a cockroach lady. Grab the intelligence amulet as this is likely the biggest hole in your attributes, and after this, we're going to grab the Infernal Salt and take the waypoint back to the sewers. Below the waypoint is a Fatberg. Use the Infernal Talc on it to open the area. Exit now to the Ebony Barracks. In here, grab the waypoint and head in the direction of that waypoint until you find Gravitius. This is a really challenging fight with a lot of incoming damage, so you might have to kite him. Once he's down, run past his tent up to the Lara's Temple. We're heading down the stairs now, and once we get to the bottom, we're going to follow the long carpet that goes through several rooms. Once we get to a room with loads of seats in it, this carpet will split in one of the two directions, either left or right. Just follow the carpet to the doorway. Just past this doorway, there's an open room to one of the sides, and in there, there's a mini boss that will grab you and pull you towards him with a chain pull. You do want to avoid this, if possible, and just run past him. Eventually, you'll find a flat of stairs down into the next area. This area has some really nasty mobs that fire out physical damage projectiles. If for whatever reason you haven't activated Determination yet, I strongly recommend you do this now. Now before we go down these stairs, take the waypoint back to Act 1. We're going to buy Molten Shell. This will replace Steel Skin on our left mouse button, at least for now. This skill can now be safely discarded. Back to the Lanaris Temple waypoint now, and we're going to head straight down the stairs. We're looking for a series of mini staircases heading upwards. If you find a set of staircases going downwards, you're going the wrong way. After several flights of stairs, you're going to find a large open area with carts up against the wall. Go in the direction where there's only one cart. Go all the way to the end of that path and you'll find a large gateway. Go through it. You're now going to look for a second pair of identical gateways and go through those as well. You'll now find yourself in a large circular room. Go through one of the gates and go up the stairs to find the portal. 
Port Lynn and fight Piety. Again. Piety will be trying to get to some of the circles. When she does, she'll upgrade her character to something a little bit more dangerous. The ice one's particularly dangerous, and you might need to hide behind some obstacles if you haven't got a lot of cold resist. You can try and destroy these circles to prevent her upgrading, although this seems to be somewhat of a folly because there's so many of them. Once she's down, back to town, and chat with Grigor for a skill book. You should now be at level 28 or slightly over, and can switch to the skill of your choice. If your build of choice isn't starting to feel strong yet, then continue to use Spectral Helix until it's comfortable. This skill will take you all the way to maps if it has to. Although if you are going to progress it beyond Act 4, then you're going to want to switch to a 4 link with any of the added elemental damage skills from Act 1. I prefer Cold for the security that Chill and Freeze gives you, but any of them will work depending on which socket you have. I can also not stress enough how important it is to keep your weapon upgraded. Now it's time to go and kill Dominus. We can get there by heading through the Imperial Gardens and then through the Scepter of God to the roof. Possibly the hardest thing in this fight is all the adds, which all are rogue exiles. That doesn't mean you should underestimate Dominus. His stream of ghosts can do a lot of damage, and also his slam is fatal to most characters. Also, in his second beast phase, he will cause you to bleed if he hits you with his claws. This fight shouldn't cause this character any problems, however, and we can just head out once it's done to the aqueduct. Running through here now, we're going to ignore the falling bird boss, and eventually we'll get to the town of Highgate. Once we do reach town, head immediately to the Dried Lake and kill Vol so we can take Deshret's banner and open the mines level 1. Head through the mines now to level 2 where we're going to free Deshret. Once she's free, find the entrance to the Crystal Veins and head in. We're going to find the waypoint in here and then head back to town. We can now talk to Tasumi who will give us a skill book for freeing Deshret. It is now time to go and find every Trial of Ascendancy we don't already have because we're going to venture into the lab for our first Ascendancy. Running the lab is beyond the scope of this video, if you do want to know more I will link a video in the description. Once Azaro is down and you've entered the treasure room for the labyrinth, it's time to ascend. But how do you know what to choose? The duelist, like all other characters except the Scion, has three different ascendancy paths. The first of these paths is the Gladiator. This powerful ascendancy class specialises in bleed and block. If you're going with bleed, then I strongly suggest blood in the eyes and gratuitous violence. They'll increase your damage and therefore your levelling speed. If you're not going with bleed, then Arena Challenger is a top pick, giving you both movement and attack speed. I would go back to Act 1 in this case though, and pick up a Blood and Sand to help maximise the effect. The next Ascendancy is the Champion. And all of these Ascendancy points are pretty situational, so I don't really have a top suggestion here. Although if you are going Impale, it's definitely going to be Master of Metal. And last but not least, we have the Slayer, a Master of Leech. And my top pick here is going to be Bane of Legends. It gives us a lot of extra damage, especially against bosses. These guys take a ton of time to make. If you have enjoyed it, then tickle that like button to let me know. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.